What's up YouTube family? John Levin here. Welcome back to Deadland Steamworks. It's been a while since we've been here. Ah, the flu has taken a rampant run through my entire household. First, my wife brings it home from all the little hellions that she works with and then gives it to my son. And then I've been suffering with allergies because, you know, Oklahoma can't make up its mind on the weather. Yeah, so it's been a while. But we've got a lot of cool stuff coming this week for sure. In a couple of days, I've got a body paint photo shoot with Prisma, which, by the way, we are now doing a Patreon for her modeling, my photography of her. I'll link it in the description, but if you're interested in supporting that whole bit, you should go check that out. Uh, it'd be a great thing for you to be a part of because we'd love to have you there. Also, I've got another product for review this week. And part of that review is a 48 hour film that we'll be shooting this coming weekend. So get ready for that. Here in a bit, Jeff and I will jump on here and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna get back to this TV show that my wife, what's this thing called? The Marvelous Miss, Marvelous Miss Maisel. It's okay so far, not the worst show. Gonna, gonna finish watching an episode of it now. And I'll be back probably with Jeff and we'll talk about the 48 hour film thing. She wants to say hi. Not that you'll be able to see her, because this is a really wide lens. What up, she's, she's over, over there. I think I'm picking her nose. That's the wife. She wanted to say hi, so we're putting her up. Dude, I'm just gonna say this. Uh, putting up with the flu, just myself, sucks, because it takes it out of me. Putting up with the flu, and having a toddler who has the flu? If you too would like to look pale and sickly and never well rested, call it the flu diet. Yeah, I've got no idea if you guys could even hear her or not. She's so far away. I'll crank the volume and post, hopefully. All right, back to the show. The audio recorder is now recording. We are all synchronized on our one track. All right, so. Are you not gonna light first? No, I'm gonna light too. We're here in this video to talk about this um, this new wireless mic system that FiFi has sent over. Yeah, they, they sent me a second one. Well, the one that we got a week or two ago, and then now we've got this dual wireless system, this wireless microphone system. And it's even Teddy, a... What? What is it? Tetation? Boy, uh, X9 Tetation. Yeah. So it's a dual wireless system. It's, uh, it's got one, two, and the one, one receiver... Two transmitters, one receiver. K038, I think is the model number. Glass break sound. It'll be, it'll be on, the links will be in the description below. So we've been tasked with reviewing this microphone system, and I felt like... We Gwen Stefani. Probably, we should be Gwen Stefani. We should talk about it a little bit before we get out, and we actually do the review, which will be later this week. So that video will be next week. We're doing a 48-hour film because I wanted to see it in context of how this could be used for a uh, filmmaker. So naturally you picked... The worst situation for making a film ever in the history of ever with equipment you didn't pick in a 48 hour challenge. Yep. 48 hour film challenge is the worst way to make a film. It is, it is a race to the bottom. It is the bad film Olympics. <laughs> I'm really sad that I agreed to do it. <laughs> Actually, I, I think they're a lot of fun. They're high stress, but you literally start and finish the project in two days. There's no. Uh, there's no escaping it. Just do it and get it done. Yeah, so Thursday, when I get off work, we're going to draw genres, a prop, a line, and I guess nowadays a character occupation because they keep making the rules a little bit more weird every year. We're going to write the film Thursday night. We're going to shoot it probably most of Friday, and then I will probably spend most of Saturday editing. The point is, we're going to talk about the mics. And the setup that we're going to use right here real quick, not, not like a crazy amount of time talking because then this video is going to be us smoking and being stupid. Probably. He wanted to use. He wanted to use these. We did want to use. He wanted to use my, these. My G, I can't see this on the background because I'm so pasty and it's dark. Yeah, it's hard to tell we're even wearing them, other than that it's messing up my beautiful hair. But I do look like, like one funny or pink or somebody. Or a guy uh, doing introductions at a strip club. Do not get that closer to your mouth. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about plosives, uh, which you probably just heard this microphone pop, and we're going to be breathing into this thing with cigars. It's going to be popping even more. 
So this is definitely the best mic that comes in the box. This is a totally different microphone than what than the lapel mic. When you get a unit like this, you get two headsets and two lapel mics. And they're both, uh, this is a really well-designed headset. Like if you were just a gamer and you just wanted to pick one up, it's got a good back. It's got a little bit of openness so that the, the air gets gets through the back. It's a strong microphone. Uh, it doesn't really need a whole lot of gain. Like we're barely pushing anything through this right now. This is you're clipping in and out the audio from these mics right now, by the way. And if I jump back and forth between camera audio and this, I'll put it on the screen. You can tell which is what. You're gonna have to because if I sit in front of you, I disrupt. I disrupt your signal. That see, is crazy. yeah, oh, man, we get we can see the receiver right now. It's all of five feet from us. Uh, you got a solid green light. You got a solid signal. If your light flickers, we're losing signal. So right now, John's. In and out. I'm gone. Just nope. Oh, You're back. gone. Gonski's toast. Huh. Just take this. This is not huh. gonna be a sparkly re huh. review segment. Huh. I'm holding my my transmitter. The receiver is like no joke. Eight feet away. Now there's a chance that it's this just that cool. particular unit. I'm, this was your idea. You wanted to do that. Okay, well, he's doing that. Anyway, there's a chance that, that, that it's just that particular uh, transmitter, and we could ask the company for another one, and it would work again. Because this one, this one, I can't, I can't get this thing to interfere if I were to, like, put a ham radio next to it. It's just a really strong box. And the individual transmitter units you got for your last Five Fine review was also a really strong unit. But that one, with very little interference, is having trouble connecting. So I don't think that it's innately Five Fine's hardware. I think it might be that particular unit. Uh, we just got one dud. Happens, you know, you make a few hundred thousand of these and you get a dud unit. We got kind of uh, messed up on that one. Um, my biggest complaints about the lapel microphone, and I'll just go ahead and get up and get that for you since we're wireless. Who cares, right? This is what it looks like without the wind screened on it. Wind screen on it. It's, uh, it weighs about four and a half pounds. It is solid steel. There's an ashtray here. You're not going to break this like we've broken other microphones. It's also not in a diaphragm cardioid uh, screen shape. So this it is offers... A <laughs> it is a super huge heavy. <laughs> a huge lob. You could crack peanuts with it, dude. This is a serious lob. And I think this is targeted at churches because that's perfect. Because if this falls off the pastor and he steps on it, it's not going to break, dude. Like, <clears throat> seriously. Uh, you could cut diamonds with the edge of that. Um, but it's not good at sending back reflections, and it doesn't have a lot of ports open to let air in. So it's just not a very loud microphone, and it's encased literally in a piece of... It's probably aluminum, aluminum, but it sounds it sounds tinny. It's got a lot of blockage. Uh, it doesn't offer a lot of pr uh, prevention from reflection. I don't really care for the lava up front. It's also gain-hungry as hell. Like, it just takes so much power to get a strong sound out of that. And when you do that, you just boost the noise floor. This is by far the best microphone, but we can't tape this to anybody's chest and hide it. So that, when, okay, when we're running the lav mics, well, when we're running the system, period, how do we have this hooked up? Um, so the receiver itself is not a, it, these run to a wireless receiver that comes paired to the microphones they send you. So we can run two wireless microphones and it's got two quarter inch jacks to the front. The receiver itself has a small mixer on the front. It's got some accoutrements. You can add echo to it. And if you have a music player hooked up to it, you can also run you can also run and mix your music, which is not important right now. Uh, so we we are mic A or sorry, we are mic B and C and they have their own gain faders on them. Uh, little gain pots. They're not very powerful, but if you were doing this in a church or a public event, how these microphones are meant to be used, you would run them to a mixer anyway and get additional uh, gain through your mixer. We have a little bit more of a ghetto solution. Um, you sh we have the H6 hooked up, but between the receiver box and the H6, we actually have a headphone amp, unknown brand, not sponsored. Um, but it's, it pushes a lot of gain because it's meant to power powerful headphones. It's a four-way headphone splitter. So we're running the receiver into the back of the four-way headphone splitter. And we've got two channels set up coming out into a Zoom H6n, which is a good source of clean gain most of the time. I don't think that the Zoom 6 was as good as the Zoom 4 at having a glean, uh, clean pots or uh, clean preamps. So we're using the headphone amp for most of our gain, and then we're getting a good clean finish on the Zoom H6. So we got three gain stages here. 
and I'd probably say that the receiver is uh, second best to the headphone amp and probably even a little bit better than the zoom as far as just getting it loud without introducing too much noise. So the simplified answer would be receiver to an amplifier to a recorder. Yeah. Okay. The headphone amp is basically just a small mixer box. It's not really... Yeah, it conditions the signal a bit, but it's not like a guitar amp. Right. So that brings up the next point to make, and that's that when we shoot the film and we're using these this system with the lobs, not the headsets, as our source of audio with no boom arms and all the you know shotgun mics and stuff, this is it. We're shooting all the audio. We'll do the totally all of it with these mics. Um, the, the challenge here is going to be that everything comes in on one channel. It's, it's, a, it's a mono output? It is. It, I believe that the aux out is a mono out, and if you use the left and right out, I still get both microphones coming in over the left or right channel. Like It will not give me two signals out any which way about it. So in the sense of it, it's really made for the live performance stuff, church, school play, classroom, that sort of thing, in that everything that comes in is just one one channel coming out. They don't have to like mix it on a separate mixing system. You don't get the individual channels separated like you would want in a film. So we're going to have to have some workarounds for that when we shoot things, probably going to shoot them one line of dialogue at a time, yeah. one person at a time with no opposing conversation going on. That's going to make it fun. We can't get two tracks to save our lives out of this thing. And if you were using this in a church or in a live event, you would want to avoid stereo cables because if there's not software telling it to fill left or right and you get a mono signal into a stereo cable, it will only go to left or right channel and you might wind up with a dead half of your house. Half your house's speakers will not be getting the dialogue. So mono cables only because it is a mono signal only. All four microphones that are capable of going into this unit will come in mono. So that that's basically all of our major negatives though we have low power on the lobs this has poor transmission apparently and everything comes in on one mono signal any other major negatives to it um it's wireless but i don't think that's a innate negative uh, no no i mean they're decently powered we've, we've managed to get a power source to it um, anybody who's actually looking to make this a cheap filmmaking solution, which is what we're testing, is this viability as a filmmaking solution? He's drinking wine. I'm drinking root beer. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, you can't record with this, uh, is something that amateur filmmakers should know coming out the gate. You have to run this box to something. So you're still going to be buying some type of recorder, uh, probably a field recorder, or trying to hook that beast up directly to your camera, which would be a very amusing rig. That would probably be... <laughs> On the back of your shoulder pad. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd have to have separate, like, AC power to it, because it's not a battery... Like, a battery it powered, is powered device. It is powered, so for filmmakers who are looking for mobile solutions, uh, it's just as good as if you had a mixing board, man. You would, you're would you going to have to power this thing to a wall, and someone's going to have to ride levels and monitor that carefully. But as far as a filmmaking solution, you could simply run just a Zoom H1, like a $100 recorder, then get all of your audio on a separate recorder over there that way, and still have backup audio like a shotgun mounted to your camera. Before we even get started on this film, just knowing the Five Fine Company and what they've sent you already, I would much rather have four individual transmitters. Oh, yeah. Because their $30 mm -hmm. transmitters are solid, and these microphones aren't the worst, I would like to swap them out with a different microphone and just use their transmitter because this thing, at least my pack, is solid. I really think that is just... A faulty uh, pack. Yeah, that's not the company because there's no way that this one comes out cherry and that one comes out like that. It, I don't think that's just a QA issue. I think it's just one dead pack because your other pack was... you When you tested your other individual pack, you went to like the other side of the zoo and was still getting a clear signal. Yeah, I went away. And that's with everybody in the Oklahoma City Zoo using their cell phones and whatnot and CB radios and the trucks nearby. And, and that mic was super sensitive, too. I was hearing kids in the playground 60, 70 feet away. Well, that more goes into the construction of the microphone, which is not the same as what we would usually use. Um, it's on the desk. Bear with me. 
So I'm not going to mention the name of this company, but this is what a cardioid, this is what a, this is what a lav usually looks like, and it also looks a lot like a normal dynamic microphone like you would use on stage. You have to hold that way closer to that lens. It's, it's a black object on a black screen. I mean, what you want, it's out of focus now. What do you, here, it's, that's the most contrast you're going to get. <laughs> this is basically a source of white. We actually balanced this to my skin before we started filming. Uh... But the, sp the shape that's always been on a cardio or on a dynamic mic has been this shape for a reason. This mesh is not just a random piece of mesh thrown over it. It's It's got the ability to deflect reflective audio coming in from the room. And so when you're putting it close to your chest, not only are you the closest source to the sound, but it's canceling out reflections that are coming in. Just like a shotgun mic has those slits in the side and is in a tube so it can reject sound waves coming in and push them back out so things only come in through the front that's what that's designed to do and that's why you don't hear so much around you this thing just has wide open ports on the side it doesn't have any slits along the top that are angled to remove reflection and it's got one port in the top so it's receiving air coming in from all sides and then one through the top and then just not really down at an angle but it's not doing anything to push it out everything is directed right towards the uh to the to the coil at the bottom which will actually generate your audio signal it's not it's this is designed to be used on stage it's not it's not really meant to be used in a loud environment like that is or like a dynamic mic is it has no noise canceling ability all right so let's talk real quick because we're almost out of time i don't want this video going super long we're already well, I can minutes talk ahead. about microphones forever i know we might have to do that sometime just sit down with a cigar and couple of cases of beer <laughs> let's get glenn fricker involved so i can learn things oh yeah for real so let's talk real quick about the positives of this system and what uh, advantages we're going to have using it if any but just the positives about this system in general whether it be on film or not what do you what do you think uh the the cost i mean this system is 90 bucks you get two mics you get a wireless system with two mics that when, when one pack is not dying, it's a really hardy wireless system. I think the signal comes in pretty clear. If you have to condition it, I don't I don't know that that, that headphone amp's probably fifteen bucks. Tops. Yeah, it wasn't very expensive. Even so, if you're pushing it to a recorder, there's enough gain there that you're gonna be fine. This room is super noisy. This is a terrible place to test this a microphone. This is a horrible room. But you can also push it in post. Yeah, a little bit. I don't recommend that being your A plan for any reason. Um sure. We can get into we can get into when to choose to go quiet and when to go loud in another video, uh, but because you're not going in line how we would usually do it, we would usually just use a field recorder in the pocket straight to a, a zoom and avoid wireless systems altogether. The drawback to that is we cannot monitor audio, so if something happens to that microphone or that recorder or to that connection while we're recording, we don't know about it until we're editing. You can monitor this because you, it's connected to, directly to your field recorder. Wireless systems always have that benefit. You can hear what's going on. So we can we can set up an audio booth for somebody to sit at and monitor the audio while we're recording to make sure we're getting good sounding audio during during the takes of the film. And you can ride levels. If somebody is going to yell in your scene, you can turn it down while they're yelling and boost it back up. That's a totally normal thing to have on a film set that we usually don't have because we usually do hardwired solutions that we can't even monitor. Right, and our boom guy is usually a, uh, a a broom stand or something. Right, that's true. We've not had a good audio guy ever. Yeah, and we had Nate for a couple of couple of days of short filming, but which was fun. Oh yeah, I like working with him. I also think these are really durable, especially yeah. at the cost point, the price point. Like those lobs. That looks like an armored tank versus the little ones we normally use. Yeah, I don't. I'm not scared at all to slap that thing on that p other metal object. Like that's not gonna. <laughs> nothing's gonna break that, dude. You park a car on that. That's crazy good construction. I don't think it's a useful design acoustically, but like you could bean someone in the head with that. Oh yeah. It's perfect for events. If that gets dropped on the floor and kicked around, unless somebody cuts the cable, that thing's gonna work perfect every time. And I have the feeling we're gonna do some shenanigan-y type things, some DIY solutions like put one of these on the end of a pole and use it as a boom mic instead of just having it, you know, lob, like a lob on somebody. Yeah, once we get to Folly, I'm ditching those things. We're going to be do doing this. Sweet. What other positives you got? Anything? Uh, I mentioned cheap. I mentioned, we've mentioned durability. The ability to, to hear your audio live. I know this solution is definitely not for people who are already using gear like we have. Um, 
But if you're in that first hundred dollars trying to get audio for people, uh, being able to go wireless and monitor a lav is, is pretty, pretty useful after having a, a shotgun mic of some kind, a shotgun mic of any kind, really. The lav is, is a really useful tool for getting a microphone out of the shot. So just the price point. Yeah, it could be the first, it could be a good first step for a lot of people. All right. We're going to wrap this up. I think it's uh, I think it's a good product for what it is. May not suit this specific need, but we're going to do it anyway because, I mean, challenges are fun, right? Right, Rob? Challenges are fun. Um, Might office space this thing <clears throat> when we're done with it. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys in a bit. Wow. Okay. So I appreciate you guys hanging out watching the show. If you enjoyed that content, make sure you hit subscribe, hit like on the thumbs up button down below. I don't know what Jeff's doing. Throwing in some flares there. Yeah. Does that look good? Does that look pretty? No. Of course it, it never does. looks good with anybody does this. DIY lens flares. Anyway, I appreciate you guys hanging out to the end of this. Check out Five Find. They make some pretty cool stuff. If not this particular system, maybe there's a different one you could find some use of. I'm not getting paid to say any of this. They did not pay me to review these things. They did send me the products for free. Anyway, make sure you subscribe. Hit like for more. Jeff's messing with the shot. Your shot's bad. Find me on Patreon. I, I'm in the shot. No, you're not. Not completely. Find me on Patreon. Also, check out Prisma. Her link will be in the description below for her stuff on Patreon. My photography, her modeling, our artwork. It's awesome. Having a lot of fun with that. Upcoming stuff this week. We've got a body paint shoot with her. In a couple of days, we got the 48 hour film this weekend, which will be a couple of videos in itself, along with an actual review of the Fifine wireless microphone system in that setting. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. If you had a flippy screen, you could have seen your frame. For the record, Jeff is and always will be a troll, which is one of the reasons why I let him stay around. See you guys next time. <coughs>